Hello everyone, welcome to Pilots Community. And in today's video, we shall see how pilots program their aircraft before every flight. So programming is basically done with the help of two consoles at the pedestal, which are also known as the MCDU, which stands for Multiple Control and Display Unit. So the left one is used by the captain and the right one is used by the first officer. No matter which one you choose for programming, the other MCDU will have the same effect on it. So here we have the MCDU of Airbus. So the first step is to go to the data page, then go to aircraft status. And then we check the series of the aircraft, uh, the engine type, and then we check the navigation database validity, which is very important because our uh, active nav database should be valid. There is a cycle of 28 days for which a navigation database is valid for. Ours is valid from 18 June to 15 July, which is 28 days. One important thing, all the fields that are in green cannot be modified and they are FMS data. And all the fields that are in blue, they can be modified by the pilot. So after data, we move to initialization page also known as the init page where we can enter our departure and destination airport. So let's say today we are doing a flight from Bangalore to Mumbai. So in init page, we will enter V O B L for Bangalore and V A P B for Mumbai. And then we'll use this line select key to enter the data. Whatever we write here, this is called scratch pad. We enter the data from this keypad and we use these line select keys to insert those data, whatever we have just written here. So the next step is to enter the alternate airport. Let's say that uh, today's alternate airport is Chennai, Victor, Oscar, Mike, Mike. Then let us say our flight number is A320. And then comes the cost index. Cost index is defined as cost of time to cost of fuel. It really depends on the airline and depending on the cost of fuel, if the fuel is cheap, then we would want to fly faster. So we'll enter the higher cost index because cost index is directly proportional to cost of time. If the fuel is expensive, cost index will be lower. So what basically cost index does is it increases our cruising speed and we reach faster, but increases the fuel consumption as well. Let's say on today's flight, our cost index is 25. And let's say the cruising altitude is flight level 360. And also after the slash, we can enter the temperature, whatever the temperature is as per the flight plan. Then we have the tropopause, tropopause data. Again, we enter from the flight plan. In the flight plan, we have significant weather charts. So here we have an extract of significant weather charts. And you can see that on our route from Bangalore to Mumbai, the tropopause flight level is 550. The tropopause flight level is marked in the box here. It is marked for different latitudes as well. So our tropopause altitude is 5,000 feet. Now let's go to the flight plan page. So our flight is from Bangalore to Mumbai. So we're going to follow this flight plan that is shown on the top of the screen here. So let us say that we are departing from runway 27 right. So we'll select this line, select key of VOBL, go to departure, select runway 27 right, and then we'll choose a set that will join us to the transition point Opamo. Set is basically standard instrument departure. It's a predefined route that will take us to the end route phase of the flight. So there are different sets for one runway so that the traffic flow is managed. So let us say that we are choosing set OPAM 7 Bravo and it will take us to the OPAMO transition point. So we'll then select temporary insert and then we will have all the points on the set. The last point will be the transition point OPAMO. Now as per our flight plan after OPAMO, we have to follow Whiskey 56. So we will select OPAMO. Then we'll select airways because we are going to enter an airway and then enter whiskey five, six. Then after the airway comes the next waypoint, which is as per our flight plan is Aguila. So we'll enter and then the flight plan says star. Let's say today we are not following any star and ATC will radar vector us to the Mumbai airport. So we'll select temporary insert and all the waypoints that lie on Whiskey 56 till Aguila will automatically be loaded in the flight plan. So you can see there are so many points here. And finally, the last point that we entered Aguila is shown. Uh, then we can select the destination airport, go to arrival. Let's say that our arrival runway today is ILS runway 27 and we are not using any star and there will be no approach wire because we are being radar vector. Then temporary insert. Now after flight plan coming to the secondary flight plan. Secondary flight plan is basically another space for a flight plan to be entered. Now there are three types of scenarios which you can face. 
you can be taking off from an airport which is of low visibility so you can have a takeoff alternate so you can plug in the takeoff alternate in your secondary flight plan so by copying the active flight plan what you can do is you can select any waypoint and uh, as new destination you can enter your takeoff alternate now the second type of scenario that you could face is let's say that you're having an emergency immediately after takeoff so you decide to land back at your departure airport that is bangalore itself so again the procedure will be same select a suitable waypoint and then enter in the new destination as Bangalore itself which is your departure airport now the third type of scenario which you could face is uh, you might be expecting a different standard instrument departure let's say that ATC has initially given you a particular SID you are expecting the air traffic controller to give you a different SID so you can pre-plan it and keep it ready and then we are not done yet we'll go to secondary we'll go to the performance we'll go to next phase next we'll go to our approach phase and we'll keep ready this approach as per our current weather conditions we'll enter the QNH, the outside air temperature, the current wind conditions and your minimas for your landing and your flap configuration so after filling up the secondary flight plan we come to the RADNAV page and then we hard tune the VOR in VOR1 and VOR2 now you can see that it is already tuned to Bravo India Alpha which is the Bangalore VOR but we still want to hard tune it so that the aircraft after takeoff does not auto tune the other viewers because during the time of takeoff we still want uh, Bangalore viewer to be our reference so we'll select Bravo India Alpha on both the viewers and later on at uh, 10,000 feet we can clear these and the aircraft will auto tune the other VOR frequencies that are in our in route phase of flight and after filling up these we will cross check it on the ND by selecting the VOR in both we shall cross check that the frequencies are correct, correctly tuned 116.8 and 116.8 as per our setting here in the RADNAV page after filling up the RADNAV page comes the performance part of the programming for which we will go to the init B page so it is the initialization page but we will use this arrow to go to the next page which is also known as init B here we will enter the zero fuel weight and the zero fuel weight CG which you shall obtain from your electronic flight back computations or you can do these computations by filling up the load and trim sheet of Airbus A320 so let us say that uh, after doing all the computations we have obtained a zero fuel weight of 47.5 tons and our zero fuel weight CG comes out to be 25% so we shall enter here now let's say that the fuel on board is 10 tons so we shall enter 10 tons here and the aircraft will do the computation to calculate the alternate fuel, the final time and the extra time at destination and the route reserve is 5% of our trip fuel it also calculates the gross weight and the CG then we go to the performance page wherein again after doing the calculations either using the RTOW charts or you can use electronic flight back let's say that we have obtained V1 of 129 VR of 131 and V2 of 134 we shall enter these values then we shall enter the transition altitude we know that at Bangalore the transition altitude is 7000 feet for this you can refer to your approach chart the transition altitude will be mentioned there and then your thrust reduction and acceleration altitude so now the thrust reduction and acceleration altitude are defaulted to 1500 feet HL uh, it is important to note that the engine out acceleration altitude should be such that we are at least 400 feet above the airport altitude and our net flight path is such that we are 35 feet above obstacles all the time then we go to the progress page and we check for our cruising flight level which, which we entered 350 the FMS calculates the optimum flight level in which we shall be saving more fuel and the recommended maximum altitude all these data will be presented to you after the computation so this is how the flight planning is done so if you like this video hit the like button and do subscribe to my channel and if you haven't seen my previous videos do watch them bye bye